The voice of college football, he is feeling himself today. Joel Klatt told us that uh, Tennessee was going to roll over Alabama. I told you your Trojans were going to get beat, too. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I told you? What did you tell me? Jim Harbaugh <laughs> is going to roll over Penn State because we continue to do this. We find things about Harbaugh we don't like, and we're not acknowledging in one year he turned the program around. Mm-hmm. He has, over time, developed a top five program in the country. Yeah. They are a legitimate Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia, Bama level team this year. Um, yeah, I think that every one of those teams that you mentioned have won playoff games. Okay. You know, and so that would be their next step. You know, right now, what Michigan is is what Lincoln Riley was at Oklahoma, which is like, okay, they're starting to become a really, really good team that we would include on the top end, and rightly so, but haven't done it in the playoff yet. And and obviously last year that matchup against Georgia was a tough one. But to your point, I would say this. I love and J-Mac you just t- talked about like evolving players. In in my sport in college football, your program has to evolve. Right. And and you've got to evolve as a coach and and maybe even at the NFL level as well. But we've seen the sport dramatically change over the last decade yeah. via via rules, innovation offensively, it has changed, and and I would just take you back, like, when you think of the 2018 and 19 Michigan Wolverines, they were really good teams that could not cut it at all against Ohio State. Couldn't cut it at all. Schematically, they were not built to face the top-end teams. They also weren't fast enough. They weren't fast enough, any of that, like the scheme, the personnel. Well, then Harbaugh went to work. And yeah, they had the poor COVID year. And then all of a sudden they come back last year and they've got a different style of defense that schematically the architecture of that defense is, is way more sound against the top end teams like Ohio state. They got faster on offense. They got faster at linebacker. They got faster at safety. And now all of a sudden, when you look at Michigan, it's not the team that's going to get into a tussle with Penn state and then get blown out by Ohio state. They just hammered the Nittany lions and they're like, okay, we, we are ready and built to go okay. in and face Ohio State. Okay, that game, at one point, it was 18 first downs to one. That is how Georgia would beat Penn State. That yeah. game wasn't nearly as close as the score. I agree. That, I, the, the that was game, Bama four years ago beating a Wisconsin. They rushed for 400 yards wow. on, a, on a rush defense that came into the, to the week as the fifth-ranked rush defense in the country. So, you know, Michigan's very good. They have evolved. I think Jim evolved from a, from a personnel standpoint, from a schematic standpoint. They're more balanced on offense, and also from a culture standpoint. It's a program that just feels much different. It was very rigid when I first started coming. Covering him and Colin, now you go in there and it's it's just more positive. I don't know how else to explain yeah. it, but it's certainly fun to I, be around. I can explain it to all you Harbaugh critics in two <laughs> words. Uncle Colin can explain it. Eat it. All right, let's move on to the next <laughs> segment. So okay, Hendon Hooker. All of a sudden, I hear about three weeks ago. This guy at Tennessee, he's like forty. His name is Hendon Hooker. He's not on all these quarterback boards, and I watched him against Alabama. He should be. Pocket, big arm, accurate, throw after throw. Yes. Is is that Alabama's defensive issues, or is this kid a top-10 quarterback? I think both can be true. I think both can be true. Um, So so for me, I always look at from a quarterback uh, perspective – can you make the layups and then can you also go above the X's and O's, right? So like you, you can't see, there are times when you evaluate a quarterback and you're like, man, he just makes easy throws look hard, but then he makes hard throws look easy. I don't want that type of guy. I want a guy that makes the layups and then makes it look easy when he's going down the field and doing things that you just can't coach this throw that you're seeing on your screen right here. That ball traveled 55 yards in the air which is unprecedented. That doesn't happen. Mahomes doesn't do that. And the wide receiver never broke stride, right? So, like, the talent is there, but he's also doing things just oh. in the normal course of oh football. Oh, my God, he's got a whip. The, the, the seam throws, that is a great player, a great player, and I think he absolutely is playing himself into the top 10, top five in the NFL draft. When you watch those highlights, I'm seriously, that's a Sunday-looking quarterback. Yeah, there's only a couple of guys in college football that can even sniff that. And, and Stroud's one of them at Ohio State. He's got that type. He, he doesn't have the elite arm talent that Hooker does. No. But those two are separating themselves out in, as far as the, the play that they um, have thrown out there but, this but, year. But, and by the way, Bryce Young didn't play poorly. That was a great quarterback battle. 
between Bryce Young and Hendon Hooker. Bryce I think the right. same could be said about Caleb Williams and Cam Rising in that USC-Utah game. Those were elite performances by everybody involved, and then someone had to lose at the you end. You know, my theory is there's nothing wrong with Alabama. Everybody's picking apart Alabama. Here's my theory on it. Lane Kiffin, Kirby Smart, Josh Heupel, uh, Jimbo as a recruiter. What's happening is they're all stealing a recruit from Alabama. Just a one or two or three. Alabama's depth isn't what it used to be. It used to be Alabama six years ago lose a corner. Oh, well, they got nerd guys in the NFL. Now Alabama loses a receiver last year. You're like, oh, those backups are backups. I think the conference now has so many elite, young, dynamic recruiters. Billy Napier is known as a great recruiter. Sure. Alabama, when USC dominated the sport, Pete was by far and away the best recruiter in the yeah, conference. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Saban had about an eight-year run when Tennessee couldn't get their act together. Auburn couldn't get their act together. Florida couldn't get their act together. They're all getting their act together now. I see, but the thing is, is that they're still up there in number one, number two in the in the composite, which is like the the most talented teams in the country. Um, I think that this version of Alabama this year has underperformed to this point. Coaching? Um, I don't know if it's coaching. Well, I think that there's some there's something off. With Alabama, I think that their pass defense is not what we have seen. No. And, and, I, and maybe it's depth issues like you're talking about. They're also facing some great players like Hendon Hooker, and I think Ewers was great in that first quarter against Texas. Um, I, I, I think it – let's just put it this way. I'm not going to bet against Alabama. They can still win the SEC championship, and they can still win the national championship. No, I don't feel the same. The area that I actually think is hurting them the most right now, and maybe this will get fixed, I don't know. The reason that they struggle on the road over the last couple of years wow. is actually because their offensive line's not quite as dominant of what they have been in the past. When you look at, like, 2020, that was a great offensive line, Najee Harris in the backfield. They can run it and did very well against Texas A&M, but A&M was ranked 14th in the SEC stopping the run. I, I don't think that they control the game with their offensive line like they used to, yeah. and that's why they've struggled in some of these road environments over the last two years. Well, USC <laughs> gets a bye week with two of their best players hurt. Then they get three cream puffs. Then they play UCLA. If they win it and thump ugly Notre Dame, they can face Utah again. Or Oregon, but or, or Utah again, yep. The team that just beat them. I'll make a prediction right now. USC wins out in their conference, and ends up in the playoff. I feel better about them today than I did before the game. I think that they're, they're going to have to avoid some potential chaos in the SEC, right? So, like, what do you do with, with, with USC that's a one-loss Pac-12 champ that but lost on the last play Utah? of the game. I understand that, yeah. but what do you do if, like, like let me just paint the scenario here. Yeah. Let me paint a scenario. Alabama wins out. They're a 12-1 SEC champ. They're in, hands down, for sure. They would beat Georgia, who would come into that game undefeated, so they're 12-1. They beat Tennessee, and they're only lost. They're 11-1. Yeah. Do you really trust that the playoff committee would, would put USC yes. in over that Tennessee yep. team that beat Alabama last yep. week? Yep. I don't, I, don't, I don't trust them to do that. Bottom line is the last SEC team to lose, you're out. Two SEC, Ohio State, and USC. I what don't do, think what about Clemson? Clemson might be undefeated. Clemson's going to lose. I don't buy Clemson Wait, at all Wait, who's beating Clemson? I, listen, I'm not disagreeing with you. I don't know what Clemson is, right? So I can't sit here and, and in good conscience tell you, oh, this is a great team. They're fixed on the offensive side. DJU is, is going to carry them. The defense is fantastic. I don't know, okay? I don't think that they're great, but who's beating them in that conference? Somebody. Not, uh, it's, well, it's not going to be Syracuse this week. They're not good enough to go undefeated. All I know uh, is... They are. They are in that conference. USC, they are. USC, I watched that game and I thought, they're playing Utah again. There is value to losing a close one, especially <laughs> when you get jobbed by the officials in your eyes. Oh, here we go. No, I didn't say uh, in their eyes. Oh, I see. I Well, in my eyes, too. But in a lot of <laughs> eyes, USC got jobbed. Okay, let's go to this one. Let's see here. Okay. UCLA is going to beat Oregon this week. I, I think so. I feel it in my bones. I know everybody's talking upset. I'm going to take UCLA. They're, they are six and a half point dogs, and I don't understand that. I really don't. Um, and the reason is, is because you can see the trend and the trajectory of this program. Listen, I think Oregon's pretty good, and they've yeah. certainly played better, in particular at quarterback with Bo Nix, since that game against Georgia. Right. Having said that, they don't have, I don't think, the balance that USC does. USC is very good on defense. They can run it. They You're can throw UCLA it. UCLA or USC? Oh, I'm sorry, UCLA. UCLA. 
They don't have the balance that the Bruins have. DTR is the best quarterback in the Pac-12 right now, statistically, even better than Caleb Williams, in particular with his play in the second best half. Best running back. He's, he's, threatening, he's threatening the defense with his legs, and Zach Charbonnet is the best back in the Pac-12. Again, the defense. And then check this out. The trajectory of this program. Everybody loved to take shots at Chip Kelly. Let me just defend Chip Kelly here. He's been there since 2018, and every single season, their winning percentage went up. Yep. And when you look at what they've done on the road, which is always the toughest to do in any conference, right, is go on the road and win. His first 13 games on the road as the UCLA head coach, they were 3-10. and 10. Right. Wasn't great, and I understand that. Do you know in his last seven games on the road, guess what they are? 7-0. and 6-1. and one. Their only loss was at Salt Lake against Utah, which is a very tough place to play, and you just found that out last Saturday night when USC went, went down in that game. I think UCLA is better than people anticipate. I don't know why that line is 6.5, and, and I think the Bruins went outright. You and I both said this. We talked about this. This was going to be the best team in the country that nobody was talking about because Lincoln Riley was getting so much press. He sucked all the oxygen out of the room. And we kept saying, and, and we weren't the only ones. There were people at other networks that know college football saying, Watch out for UCLA. They got seniors all up and down yep. the offensive line. Yep. They've got playmakers, the uh, top running back. Let's Think, go, uh, well, just real quick yeah. uh, on UCLA's behalf, nobody has controlled Utah since Cameron Rising became their quarterback. Nobody's controlled them like UCLA. Not Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. Not USC last week in, in, in a loss for USC. Like not even Florida in that loss that Utah had uh, to start the season. Like. UCLA handled that team. Yeah. Only team to do that since Cameron Rising became their quarterback. Blew them out. All right, let's go to your top 10, Joel Klatt's top 10. Uh, so last week was the best college football weekend of the it year. It was great. There's a lot of potential upsets looking around. I got to tell you something. I do not see a big gap anymore. For the first time in 10 to 12 years, I do not think Michigan – I think Michigan can go up and play. I don't know if they can win. Well, think about it this, this, think about it this way. UCLA has closed the gap on the country and the top end of their conference. Michigan has closed the gap on Ohio State. Tennessee has started to close the gap on Alabama and Georgia. Clemson is still who they are, yeah. but even Ole Miss is better. TC, like this is this is a good Look year in college football. By the way, are you noticing how has Tennessee closed the gap? A superstar quarterback. How has UCLA closed the gap? A great quarterback. How is Michigan? He's young. He's a big-time quarterback. TCU, Max Duggan, closed the gap. Utah, its best quarterback in program history. You start looking at all these teams at the top, we know that the, the worst quarterback in that group is George's. Well, it pr probably, I, I don't, I, you know, I mean, Stetson did, it, he's also the only quarterback in that group that has won a national championship. So I don't want to just throw dirt on the, I'm not on the kid. I'm saying he's bad. I'm saying there, there's a lot of NFL quarterbacks on that list. I, I agree. And I will tell you this, this year in particular, it, when you look at the top 10, when you look at how these conferences will play out, when you look at the games last weekend, you are not winning a championship without an elite quarterback. You cannot just have a requisite quarterback this year. And so Georgia, I'm talking to you, Stetson Bennett, his play has to increase because you've got to face Hendon Hooker, you've got to face Bryce Young in your own conference, and the same can be said about J.J. McCarthy and C.J. Stroud. The same can be said in the Big 12. The same can be said in the Pac-12 as well. You better have an elite quarterback. By the way, I said two words earlier, eat it, and I doubled <laughs> down on those with Harbaugh. Go look at that top 10. Okay, if you don't think Harbaugh can coach, Go look at this top 10. Harbaugh is the only coach in that top 10, you know, that got to a Super Bowl. That's that true. took an academic power in Stanford to a 12-win team. Folks, that Michigan thing, they've gotten great athletes forever. Harbaugh in that top 10. If there was an NFL opening today, Harbaugh's the first guy to get a call. Well, I listen, Jim Harbaugh and the sport of football – has done about as much as as anybody can to still be criticized as heavily it's as incredible. he is. I, I I don't get it. I don't get it. Good seeing you, man. It's great seeing you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.